So, the Kawasaki ZX-9R, as a lot of you probably already know, is having some issues with its brakes. Now, I've literally just done the clutch fluid on the ZH2, so what I'm going to do today is give these brakes a little bit of an overhaul. I'm not going to rebuild them or anything like that. I'm going to try and get as much life out of these as possible for the time being. But all I'm going to do is replace the brake fluid, bleed it, and then I'm going to take off the calipers and give them a, a little bit of a clean and hopefully that will sort out our braking issues. So basically what's happening is it's biting but then it gets to a point where it kind of s stops you from getting any more stopping power and then all of a sudden it jumps and then you get a massive bite and it only tends to happen at slower speeds but I really don't like the feel of it especially because this is a very very fast motorcycle I want my brakes to work as best as they can. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do in today's video. Let's crack on. Oh, but before we do, let's go over some of the tools that we're going to need. So of course you're going to need some dot four brake fluid. And I've got this little, little bottle here with basically a, a tube, a surgical tube, which is what is gonna go onto the brake caliper bleed nipple. I got this from Halfers for a about a tenner but you can basically just do the same thing with a milk bottle and a straw right finally I've got some brake cleaner okay now let's go now I'm kind of debating whether or not it's worth cleaning the brake calipers first getting them off giving them a clean before doing the brake fluid or after uh, I kind of want to do the brake fluid first that's what I'm gonna do so the brake fluid, I think I've shown you guys this before when we did the oil change on this bike, but the brake fluid doesn't look too bad. It's starting to look a little bit darker than it probably should be, but it's looking not so bad, but I'm gonna change it out anyway, just because, well, it's best practice. But a simple process, it's a really simple process doing this. So you take off the little bleed nipple, which is, or the little cover here rather, a little cover that exposes the bleed nipple. And this one's a bit cruddy. Um, I don't know if, I'm pretty sure you could probably get new ones of these, but yeah, this one's all like cracked, but should be fine. Then it's just a simple case of hooking this little tube up to it. If I can get this through here, this is like a little clamp. So I can give you guys a, a slightly better view of this. Trying to do this one-handed is a little bit of a pain. But anyway, if you slip that on there, get that on there, and then this little toolkit has got this clamp that goes on like that, and that should keep it in place. Now, ideally, the bottle would be higher up than the bleed nipple, because then it helps bleed the brakes of air a little bit better, but this should work just fine. Right, so basically in exactly the same way as we bled the clutch fluid from the ZH2, because that's got a hydraulic clutch, it's basically the exact same process here. So we're going to undo the brake reservoir. Now I am going to top this up with fresh fluid first before we do anything. But yeah, just take it easy with how much of this you pour in, especially at the start. And be careful with this stuff. It can be quite corrosive. So if you get it on the paintwork, dot four does not like paintwork. Right, pump that a few times. Now let's go back down to the caliper. Right, so now with my 10 mil spanner, I'm gonna get that on there so it's ready. Then I'm gonna pump the brake lever. Hopefully you guys can see that as well. Let's see if I can get both of them in the picture. So as I pump the brake lever, I'm gonna crack this open get it around the other way crack this open and we should start seeing brake fluid come out maybe it needs a little bit more cracking still nothing yet there we go just felt the pressure go in the brake and you can see the fluid is now going through you pump, close it. Pump it again so it gets some more pressure. Crack it open again. There we go. 
whilst you're doing this, keep an eye on the brake fluid level. You can still see it's got plenty in there still. It's gonna keep pumping. Then I'm gonna close off the valve. All right, now from here, we can top up the brake fluid in the reservoir. It's basically rinse and repeat. The one thing that you don't want is air to get in it, okay? So whatever you do, keep an eye on that brake fluid. Make sure that it's not running too low. Right, now that fluid is looking pretty clear on this side. So I'm gonna to top up the brake fluid reservoir and basically do the exact same thing on the other side. God, that was on there tight. Pretty sure it doesn't have to be on there that tight. Right, time to top up the brake fluid. Right, that's done. Uh, yeah, I can get this off. Hey. Spilt a little bit, but it's all right. All right, so once the calipers have both been bled, it's just a simple case of topping up the reservoir. Yeah, looks about the same orange, to be honest, the new stuff as the old stuff. So this was probably done recently. But the last thing that we need to do is give them a bit of a clean, give the brake calipers a bit of a clean. Right, now I know this is the fluid from the ZH2 hydraulic clutch bleed, but I mean, yeah, it's, it's added in with all this. It looks a little bit, looks quite gunky. So glad I did this, but I don't think it's going to be the only thing that we're going to have to do today. And I'm glad I did the bleeding first because look, I've got some great fluid on the caliper now. I have to give that a good old good old wipe down but now I'm going to take off the calipers and give them a little bit of a clean around the pistons and a little bit around the outside as well I suppose why not and because these have got steel braided brake lines it should be okay just to leave them hanging off the caliper once I've got them off so for this I've got a 10 mil socket and it should just be a case of undoing two of these bolts. Oh, they shouldn't be on there that tight. Ugh. Yeah, there we go, okay. Just gotta give it a little bit more heave. Ugh. God, it feels like I'm lifting the whole end of the bike up. Right, anyway, that should do. So getting, getting these off should be a doddle now. Let's put the lid back on our brake fluid reservoir whilst we're here. We don't forget. So this should just come off. There we go. Yeah, you see how dirty that is. These haven't been cleaned in a little while. <laughs> That is, a, that is sprung, this, so be careful, because it will, it will come out. 
and lose the screw. There's two screws. It's got that little retaining hook there as well. The little pin there that's holding the brake pads in just pops out. <laughs> All this is going to need a seriously good clean. I mean, it's had some copper grease on it, you can tell, but there's still quite a lot of meat left on these brake pads, so happy about that. Right. So now you need a bit of a clean, because I don't know if you guys can see how much crap and grime is in there. There's a lot. Yeah. Not very pleased with that. All right, so for this, I've got some brake and parts cleaner. Now I'm just going to spray some in there to get some of that general gunk off. Then I'm going to use a cloth to get the rest of it. Oh, got my trousers dirty. Doesn't matter too much if you get this on the brake disc either, so don't worry about that too much. Give it a bit of a wipe down as well. Now what I'm about to do might sound a little bit crazy with the brake pads out, but I'm actually going to pump the brake. Now what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to put one of these brake pads in just in case I pump a few too many times because what I want to do is expose the pistons a little bit all right so you can see a little bit more crud in there now There you go because now I've been able to get a little bit more crud off of the pistons but to be honest looking at it I think these calipers might need a rebuild I don't know but I suspect I suspect they do all right so to push these pistons back in I'm just going to use this spanner and just brace up against the top of the caliper and it should just go back in I mean, you might even be able to do it with your thumbs. Oh yeah, I can. Do it with my fingers. Ugh. All right, that should be enough. Let's get the brake pads back in. Yeah, I think these are gonna need a rebuild at some point in the near future, but it's a good thing because that is more content for us to film. <laughs> right, so let's see how these go back in. One there, and then another one. Oops, wrong way around. Another one at the top. And we've got to put this retaining pin back through. There we go, that's the retaining pin back in there. And then we've got this little security pin here that we can just poke through a little teeny tiny hole just like that okay right I'm gonna go ahead and put this caliper back on this side and do the exact same thing on the other side but yeah let's We can get this on there first. There we go. 
don't worry I, and I know about the spring I'm gonna put that in at the end right so whilst whilst this is loosely in there I'm gonna put the spring in because the spring this is the spring it basically forces the brake pads forward It's got some serious backfire. <laughs> and these really didn't need to be on there as tight <laughs> as they were. That's good enough, I think. We're not going anywhere. All right, so we've done this side. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side, but I'm going to do it off camera because I mean, well, it's difficult to film out the other side anyway, but I mean, pretty much is the exact same process on the other caliper, on the other side of the bike, the other side of the wheel rather. But yeah, I think these are gonna need a rebuild. I don't think there's any way I'm gonna be able to get around it. The pistons look quite rough around the edges and I'm pretty sure that's probably where my issue is coming from. So this may help a little bit now, but yeah, maybe in a month's time, a few weeks time or so, it's probably gonna start doing it again. So anyway, I think we'll leave it here for today's video. So thank you ever so much for watching. If this has helped you out, leave a like, get subscribed so you don't miss any more of our maintenance tutorials, tips, so to speak. I'm gonna remind you, I'm not a mechanic, but I've done this before enough times to kind of know my way around it, despite the fact that I've never worked on this particular uh, Tokiko caliper before but but yeah so just want to put that out there but as always let me know what you think down in the comment section below if I've made any mistakes or any tips for anyone that's looking to do a similar job like this on their own bikes and yeah we'll catch you all in the next video have a good one